So lots of hunting dogs really like to play, right? They have high play drive. And so if you start doing more intense uh, behaviors and things like that, and you want a higher value reward, you can use it there. If you talk to the old school hunting people, they're like, never play tug with your hunting dog. They'll, They'll, they'll get a hard mouth, right? They're gonna, because they're concerned, like hunting dogs are supposed to bring back birds intact, not crushed flat, right? So they go for what's called a soft mouth, right? The dog holds the, the object softly in its mouth and brings it back. You don't want a dog with a hard mouth retrieving your birds, they're all mashed up, right? And so that's judged, and they think playing tug will encourage a hard mouth. But that's only if you taught the dog to retrieve birds through play. If I was treating a bird like a toy, yeah. But I, like I've taught my, my, the lab that I, that I had, I taught him to play with me. He played tug like a banshee, and I taught him a formal retrieve. But the formal retrieve is obedience, it's not play. I don't go out and play with a bird. He learns to hold an object in his mouth to get another reward. And I te in, for hunting dogs, a lot of times we teach them to hold on our hand. So the same way that I would use a PVC pipe or something like that, I teach the dog to hold on my hand so I can feel the pressure. And I go, easy, they hold. Yes, they release that and they get another reward. So they learn to hold the retrieve item softly in their mouth. Like my old Mondi ring dog, Pi, who I used to play with, I could have him retrieve an egg. He wouldn't break it. Like he'd go pick the thing up because he would hold that calmly and softly. And then when I played tug with him, that's a different game. And so they can definitely learn the difference between those things. There's training involved, right, in making sure. And if you're Formal retrieving and play retrieving are not the same thing. It's very important for people to realize. A play retrieve, the dog looks at the object as a toy. Play retrieving is a way of reinforcing, it's a game we play to motivate dogs and they're looking at the object you're playing with as a toy, as something that I like to have. A formal retrieve is a set of obedience operations that take place on an object, right? You learn to take that, hold it, deliver it, don't chew it, etc. And when I mark it, you're released from that for another reward. The object isn't the reward, you're doing things to that object to get a reward, right? And a formal retrieve is obedience, right? And so in hunting dogs, you have a formal retrieve, that's obedience. I don't go out with birds and go, play, play, tug of war, bring me the bird, tug of war, right? Then definitely they'll crush your thing. But if you try to teach a formal retrieve through play, there's all kinds of bad things that happen. The dogs chomp on the object, they don't want to let go of it, there's, you know, they play, toss it around, there's all kinds of possible things, that, the same kinds of things that a dog might do with their toy, right? So I don't want my dog to look at the object of formal retrieving, whatever that is, in obedience to a dumbbell or a glove or whatever it is, in uh, Mondi ring it's anything, <laughs> anything possible, in service dog work it's keys and cell phones and pens and things. I don't want them to look at those objects as toys. That's an object that you're going to perform obedience on for me. You pick it up, you bring it to me, you sit, you hold it calmly, you deliver it to me when I ask you. That's a formal retrieve. And so I think people sometimes get those confused. And there are elements of playing that can help with the formal retrieve. My dog knows to get things, likes to get things, likes to come back to me with things. And I can build habits, but the actual formal retrieve is a completely different ball of wax, right? It's an obedience process as we go along.